Today, I'm going to let you in on a travel agent trade secret. One of the ways a good travel agent can provide value to a client is by helping them pick a stateroom on a cruise ship that matches their needs and is going to be a comfortable stay for them. Traditional wisdom and what everybody knows when they uh, start looking for cruise ships, they, or they learn very quickly uh, looking at uh, cruises, that uh, most folks prefer rooms towards the middle part of the ship, that's front and back. Um, towards the center of the ship. The reason for that is that the center part of the ship doesn't get as much motion when the ship is going through the water as the very front or the very back of the ship does. The extreme ends, um, the ship pivots and, and rocks. Um, that motion creates motion discomfort for some people. It's not something that's ever bothered me, but I do know folks who, who have had these problems in the past. The so uh, a lot of um, a lot of clients come to me uh, knowing that they want the middle of the ship, but the middle of the ship that's really only part of the story, and um, there's some more things you need to think about when you're looking at rooms on a cruise ship. First off, the location of your stateroom only really matters when you're in your stateroom. Most of the time on the cruise ship, two-thirds of the time let's say, you're going to be out exploring um, out by the pool, um, eating dinner, um, playing in the casino, going to the kids clubs, doing all the things that you're there on the vacation to do. And that's not the time when you're in port, that's just when you're on the ship. So the vast majority of the time on your cruise has nothing to do with your room. But the one time you're in your room is to sleep and that's when you need it to not necessarily be stable but more importantly to be quiet there are a lot of things on a cruise ship that can make noise there's a lot of moving parts you're on a moving hotel basically um, there are doors and walkways exterior doors hallway doors all kinds of um, things above below you that can make noise and what we want to recommend and what we stress as travel agents is staying away from the noise and those noise making areas on a cruise ship they can be anywhere and it's a travel agent's job to familiarize your, themselves with the classes of ships so they can advise you what to look out for one of the biggest things you want to look out for are noises above and below coming from public areas such as nightclubs, movie theaters, um, elevator shafts, things like that. It can be something you want to be avoid. You don't want to be on a carnival cruise ship underneath the nightclub at 2 a.m. when you're trying to sleep with your kids and your babies. That's the place you don't want to be. And uh, if you're not used to looking at that, those things, what's above and what's underneath you then you can find yourself in a mess in a, a cruise that's not going to be pleasant for you. So we help you as travel agents to look for those things. And we use these um, brochures as a guide. This is a carnival brochure. It happens to have itineraries. It has um, details about the ship. It has all kinds of things. Um, but the most important part of any cruise brochure is in the back, the deck plans. And as ships get bigger, these get harder and harder to read. And you might need, find yourself needing a magnifying glass. We have them um, for that, this purpose. Let's take a look at a deck plan online. You can see it a little bit better than what I've got here. All right, let's take a look at this. I've got a deck plan pulled up here on uh, a PDF file so we can take a look at it in, in pretty close, uh, pretty good detail. This is the Carnival Magic. Not picking on Carnival here, all the cruise lines do this, um, but this is the one I happen to have handy and it matches the brochure that I have uh, in hard copy here at the office. What I wanna take a look at in closer detail are these little squares right here. These are elevator shafts. Now, what the cruise line brochure doesn't tell you and what a lot of travel agents even don't think about
store, the theater, these dining rooms here, the casino um, right here. If you're trying to avoid these rooms, you got to know something about these three decks. They're not lined up right with the other decks. How do I know that? These elevator shafts. Take a look at this. An elevator shaft, in order to function, has to be lined up directly on top of each other. These are slices of the of the ship. So an elevator runs from the bottom floor of the ship, the bottom deck, all the way to the top in most cases. There are some exceptions where the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top. You have to cut over to another elevator. Uh, one of the Disney ships, two of the Disney ships are like this, for example. But in this case, these elevator shafts run from the lowest deck of the ship all the way up to the top. But how is that possible if they're not lined up? In order to get a true picture of where these, these public areas, these noise making areas are, you've got to move, cut and paste, physically cut and paste these decks up so they match up with these elevator shafts here. That's almost three quarters of an inch. That's a big difference. What that tells you is that it's not these rooms over here that are right underneath the stage in the, in the public area of the ship here. It's these rooms up here. That's what you want to avoid. These rooms over here aren't going to be as bad if you're trying to avoid the stage than these. That's a big difference. And someone who didn't know would pick the wrong room easily. Think, well, I'm going to pick 2231 because that's right over nothing. There's not going to be any noise there. Well, the reality of it is if you scooch this deck where it needs to be, you're going to be right under something that makes noise. And you're going to have a bad experience. And that's something that travel agents should know, but not all of them do. And you just learned it. <laughs>